Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 8F, where we're going to talk about thinking about inheritance, thinking about crosses, when we're thinking about genes that are on the X chromosome, which we describe as being sex-linked genes. We'll talk about why it matters whether a gene's on the X chromosome, and about how to analyze crosses. So, we discussed in Module 4 how gender, in particular maleness, is determined by the presence of the SRY gene on the Y chromosome, and that every um, egg that's fertilized by a Y-bearing sperm, sperm will develop into a male offspring. And every embryo that's fertilized by an X-bearing sperm will develop into a female. If we think about the genes that are on the X chromosome, here I've shown the male with an A3 allele on his X chromosome, so his gametes either have a Y or they have an X chromosome with A3. The female, who I've given alleles A1 and A2, produces two kinds of gametes, both with X chromosomes, one with A1 and one with A2. And in the offspring, something quite interesting happens. So we've said the individuals that are fertilized by the Y-bearing sperm are male, but they've all got the X chromosome, one of the two X chromosomes, from their mother. They don't have any X chromosomes from their father. On the other hand, the daughters that receive the father's X-bearing sperm all have an X chromosome from their father, plus one from their mother, one of their mother's two X chromosomes. This is quite different than alleles of genes on autosomes, where we have no phenotypic cue directly as to which autosome the person inherited from which parent. But for the X and Y chromosome, we have this very obvious cue of gender. So let's make this more concrete with a pedigree example. Here the father has allele A1, and the mother has alleles A2 and A3, all X-linked. What genotypes could the children have? The easiest way to deal with these problems is to again use a mating square, just treating the frequencies as probabilities. So one quarter probability, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. And we can assign these genotypes to the children. So the daughters must have their father's X chromosome, so they must have XA1, XA1, and the sons must have their father's Y chromosome. The daughters could have either of their mother's X chromosomes, so they could have XA2 or XA3, and the sons similarly could have XA2 or XA3. Now, note that because these are probabilities, there's no guarantee that each child will have a different genotype. It could be that both daughters got the A2 allele or both daughters got the A3 allele, and the same for the sons. Now, here's another problem. Again, we can illustrate it with a pedigree. So we're told a boy, so let's draw the boy. A boy whose parents and grandparents had normal vision. So it's draws parents. And his grandparents, his father had a father and a mother, and his mother had a father and a mother. And you're asked to specify, you're told that this boy is, has, is colorblind, and I'll write that as colorblind, but that everybody else in the family has normal vision. What are the genotypes of his parents and his maternal grandparents? Well, we can track this by following the chromosomes back. So we know that the boy had an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. We know he got his Y chromosome from his father and that his father got his Y chromosome from his father. We know that he got his X chromosome from his mother. We also know that this X chromosome 
has a colorblind allele. Because he's hemizygous, he's only got one, he's colorblind. This means that his mother had two X chromosomes. One of them must have had the colorblindness allele. So that's his mother's genotype. Um, one normal allele, one colorblind allele. What about her parents? Well, could she have gotten this X chromosome from her father? She certainly got one X chromosome from her father because his genotype was XY, just like the genotype of all the other males. But if she'd gotten the colorblind X chromosome from her father, it would have to have been the case that her father was colorblind. But we're told that her father had normal color vision, so she couldn't have gotten her X chromosome from him. Instead, she must have gotten her colorblind X chromosome in the chromosome that she got from her mother. So now we've solved the problem. We've assigned genotypes to the both parents and to the maternal grandparents. It's possible that the um, paternal grandmother had a colorblind allele as well. We can't tell because it would have been masked by a normal allele. So what we've done, we've considered how in crosses, males inherit their X from their mom, always. And females always inherit dad's X chromosome and one of mom's. In problems, to look for the um, signs of a sex-linked trait, what you want to look for is difference between the phenotypes of the males and the females. And these differences arise because the males inherit their X from their mom and the females all get one from their dad. Then you can just follow the X chromosomes backwards to follow the alleles. Phenotypes for X chromosomes are complicated because, oh look, there's an S missing because males are homozygous. And this was discussed in module four, in lecture 4E, I believe. And in general, you may be wondering, well, what about the pseudoautosomal regions that we learned about in module seven? Well, for now, you should generally ignore the pseudoautosomal regions, regions certainly in conventional genetic analysis problems. Um, if you may get particular problems that involve pseudoautosomal alleles, but usually you get some hints in the question itself if that that is something you should consider. Coming up next, Lecture 8G, we're going to talk about using crosses to investigate the locations of genes that are on autosomes by following the effects, interpreting the effects of crossovers. I hope to see you there.